I felt like I was really lucky the month of April, especially locally. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. I'm really excited to bring you my pickups for the month of April, including the Monster Hunter Trilogy of Amiibo that came out, and some local pickups of games I've been after for a really long time, like the Thousand Year Door Black Label game. I also picked up a whole bunch of sealed Pokemon games. I thought this is the right time to get on the 3DS games. I made a video about that already. And then also a box Game Boy I've been after. This one is Dandelion. Before I get through my pickups, did you have any luck collecting anything you wanted this month? Let me know as a comment below, or is there an item that just keeps escaping you that you're trying to find, but you can't quite track it down right now? For me, that's definitely all the different Game Boy Colors. There's a few more that I'm definitely after, and then there's some box GameCubes worldwide that I'm still after, like Pearl White, for example. Would love to get my hands on that. Before I just talk about all my cool pickups as well, Pokemon Snap released on Friday, just a few days ago, and I'm pretty frustrated. I ordered it on Amazon as soon as it became available for pre-order, and it still is delayed, so I don't have it yet. So unfortunately, I did not get Pokemon Snap for this video. It'll have to obviously be in next month's pickups. And let me know if you're playing through that game, because I love the original Pokemon Snap. Can't wait to play new Pokemon Snap. My friends who did somehow get it, they're just kind of, you know, showing off and saying what's going on in the game, and I'm trying to ignore all of that. No spoilers. Can't wait to play through that. All right, the first thing that I would like to discuss is the Monster Hunter trilogy of Amiibo that also escaped me during launch. Not only is there Magnum Allo, who is gigantic and he was a bit more expensive than the other two, but we also have Palamute, hopefully I'm pronouncing these correctly because I'm pretty new to playing Monster Hunter, and Palico. I think they're pretty adorable how you have, how you have one that's basically kind of like a cat and one that's kind of basically like a dog. These three amiibo were really hard for me to find in my area, especially at the launch of Monster Hunter Rise. I found the Pro Controller, I found the Switch console, but I could not find these three amiibo for a little while. So I eventually tracked them down. A video will be coming. I'll unbox all three of these, hopefully sometime soon in one of the videos coming up. And like I said, Magnum Allo was a bit more expensive. All of them are really expensive, but the quality is definitely there and I think there's also some newer amiibo coming out for a different Monster Hunter game that was announced so I'm trying to keep my eyes peeled for that there's the collector's edition as well for Monster Hunter Rise but I'm not certain I'll be able to find that one we'll see when I can actually get my hands on that anytime soon all right Next up after that, I really want to talk about this really cool item from Banjo and Kazooie. This is a Cable Guys display piece that also comes with a charger. You can use it for your phone, you can use it for your controllers. I'm hoping this works with the Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. So on this, it's way bigger than I thought by the way. This looks really good, except I'm really curious about Banjo's eyes. They look a little bit off, and then Kazooie looks really quite cool. So you get an idea there with the Xbox controller blasphemy on a Nintendo channel. I think I really want to actually unbox this, maybe as its own quick little mini video and review. I think it's really cool. Again, this one was way bigger than I thought. The plastic doesn't always maintain its shape, and it's really hard to find this one, so I did buy it off of eBay. It cost me, I think, $55 shipped. Not so bad, especially considering these kinds of items. I really wish they had Nintendo characters, but they do have, like, Crash Bandicoot. They have a few other characters that you can find for it that I'm kind of interested in. Like, Crash Bandicoot would be really cool, especially for a few of my friends that love that character. I almost want to buy one for them, it's just such a cool way to kind of display your controller. Let me know what you think of those Cable Guys items. If you've been following my monthly pickups, you know that I'm after these Game Boy Colors in the box. This is Dandelion, and I must say the box is also dandy. It looks really good. It's in great condition. The system itself also looks fantastic. It's really difficult sometimes to find them with the system that also has like the back cover appropriately there, and the sticker's not scratched up, and there's no names or writing on it or anything like that. So I'm really happy to add Dandelion to my collection. This one I did find, and it was a a lot better than I should have been paying, especially like eBay prices are crazy for these things. So I think I bought this one for like 65 to $70 complete basically, which is a really good deal. My wife last month, her family found the green one, which is Kiwi, that we've been after for a really long time that was buried in her basement, I guess, in a box that we completely forgot about. So now this means I'm only really missing from the main set of these, I think a few of the 
limited edition Pokemon systems, probably for the Game Boy Color, maybe some international releases. And I think I'm actually still missing the teal system itself, even though I have the box for it. So I'm really happy to get another one of those Game Boys because honestly, I think prices for those are starting to go crazy as well. Everything's nostalgic, especially Nintendo items. I also found a really good deal locally for games that were from the Nintendo GameCube, including one of my personal favorites of all time, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and it also came with Sonic Adventure Director's Cut, the first Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. That's definitely part of my childhood, especially Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I remember playing through that a lot, the Chow Garden, all of that was a great time. Mainly here with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, why I wanted to get this purchase is they're all three in really good condition and they're a black label and they're the USA releases. They only say only four at the top left hand corner. None of that French variation on these ones. And the Paper Mario is the original print run. So black label, it doesn't have bestseller on here, greatest hits, any of that player's choice. And this is the one that's really desirable for most collectors. This is usually worth a lot more than the other variations and it's pretty hard to find a lot of the Mario games on the GameCube black label like this. Even things that don't have the sticker on it for bestseller or anything like that. Like, I think the Mario Golf game's tough to find like that. Also, the Mario Tennis game's tough to find like that. I'm kind of trying to go after all those different variations in the original releases of the GameCube games. So I bought all three of these. I'm trying to remember and do the kind of calculation in my head. Well, Paper Mario on its own, I think it was a great deal. And I think it was around 70 bucks just for that one. And then the other two were like 15 or $20 each. So in total, the deal was pretty good because this one on eBay is probably around 150 and up. So it's almost like I got all three games for that price of one. These two are actually going to be a condition upgrade to the current copies that I have so I do have those available basically for trade and I'm just trying to maybe amass some GameCube games right now especially if I can find them for a really good deal so finding these locally was pretty sweet especially when they're in good condition and one of the reasons actually why it was such a good deal is because the seller was using Amazon as the completed listings instead of looking at eBay just a quick tip to collectors definitely try and use eBay completed auctions places like price charting they almost always get just behind the times for what the prices are of games. Price charting is always like, I don't know, it's kind of amalgamating some of the prices, like the player's choice or the ones with the greatest hits doesn't always take that into account. And I feel like the sales just take a while to update the numbers to kind of get it caught up. If you're looking on Amazon, it's definitely not doing it properly. So he was looking at those prices and that's why I got such a good deal for this game, especially considering I've been after that copy of Paper Mario for a really long time. Both my copy and my wife's copy of those, by the way, are not at all the variation that I wanted. At least they weren't player's choice, but there's stickers all over the front of the games. Looks kind of weird when it's like that. All right, next up is another game that I found locally. This one is Breath of the Wild, but this is also a first print run of the game. So on the back of the game here, you can see that it has all of these different controller options, and that's a mistake, that's an error. That's how you can tell this is an original print run of Breath of the Wild, especially for the Wii U. So here, a lot of these controllers are actually not compatible. It should probably just have the two only on the far right. And that's a really quick way to see. It also doesn't have the UAE sticker on here, and it's really unfortunate there's no actual manual for something like this. Breath of the Wild, there's also a special edition of the game that I would like to get. I have the Master Edition, I think it's called, in the giant box that comes with the statue and everything like that, but I do want to get the special edition, so I'm still hunting for that one locally. Another game I decided to pick up locally, one of my friends was looking for a copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This one, yes, it's being used, but it's in pretty good condition, and this game is actually still stocked in stores. I know Mario died on March 31st when they canceled Mario's 35th anniversary. You can still find this game in stores. I don't think this is going to become crazy, crazy expensive. Who knows over time? What do you guys think? What's your prediction for Super Mario 3D All-Stars? I'm just thinking back to the Wii all-Stars Edition in the red box, and it's still not that expensive, but that was a re-release. This is like the first time we're getting these three games on its own compilation, and I honestly cannot believe we didn't get Galaxy 2 on this. I still expect Nintendo to release these games individually, maybe later this year for like $20 or $30 each. So I bought this one for $40. I think it was 40 bucks locally, and I thought that was a really good deal to help my friend out, so that's going to go to them sometime soon. 
All right, next up, after all these open games, I'm getting into sealed collecting a little bit more and more. So let's talk about sealed games next. The first one that I got is Mario Kart Wii. This is the original print version, and this is the one that is from Nintendo of America. So I think this one is a really low risk investment. I paid roughly $45 for this one. I think that's probably a fair market value. The game sold over 30 million copies. It's one of the best selling Mario Kart games of all time. I wonder if this one sold better than Mario Kart 8. I think it's still holding on to that spot, but we'll just see for how long because Mario Kart 8 is selling like crazy still. So this one, I think it's going to double or triple, especially considering the whole Wii game collection is about to turn 10 years old in a little bit. This game itself itself came out 13 to 14 years ago, 2008, so it's getting a little bit out there. I really think it's going to double or triple in the next few years, and I want to get my hands on it sooner rather than later, especially now that I'm kind of into collecting sealed games. I don't think I'll get it graded anytime soon, it's just really cool to have that in my collection. And then before we talk about a whole stack of Pokemon games, I got two more games sealed for the Wii U. I'm going after a set, especially for the ones that I think are going to be maintaining value, and there's obviously some Wii U exclusives I'm getting. This one is not an exclusive. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was ported over the Nintendo Switch. It's probably the better way of playing the game but I thought I could definitely pick this up now. This I paid, I think it was like 25 bucks for, so it wasn't an outrageously good deal, but at least it's not the Nintendo Selects version, and it's something that I wanted to get, again, really soon. Don't want to wait on these. I think the time to collect these is now. This one is seven, going on eight years old and up. So a really good game, by the way. Love the Donkey Kong franchise. Huge challenge, definitely more challenging than Mario. I think Kirby's the easiest than Mario than Donkey Kong in my books. And then an actual exclusive to the Wii U, this is Nintendo Land, factory sealed as well, of course. So this game is increasing in price, even though it was released most of the time you got it with the system, especially if you got the 32 gigabyte black uh, deluxe set for the Wii U. However, I don't think there's that many copies of this factory sealed floating around that are a low price. So again, I paid like $25 to $30 for it. It's a fantastic multiplayer experience and it really does justify using the Wii U gamepad. It is something that could technically be ported over to the Nintendo Switch, I think, but I don't, I don't see Nintendo doing that anytime soon. Let me know if you think this will ever come out on the Switch. I don't see it being ported at any point. I feel like it's kind of like NES Remix. I would love to see NES Remix ported over. I think that one's more likely than Nintendo Land itself. It's time to talk about sealed Pokemon games just one more time. I did pick up this variation of Pokemon Sun and Moon. This one has the three set of the first starter Pokemon, which is really nice that you get that. It's a cardboard box. It's the larger version, basically, of this. You can buy them individually where you get a figure inside of the box, but it's only one figure of the legendary for each Sun and for Moon. But this one, yeah, factory sealed. I thought I would definitely pick this up. It was 110 shipped, so I thought that was a good enough price. It's not in complete mint condition. There's a slight little nick right there on this corner, which is a little unfortunate. But overall, I do think these are going to start climbing. If you take a look at Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver with the Poke Walker, I don't think these are all that different. There's way more variations of these, though. Like I said, we have that one with only Sun, only Moon with the special editions. But then there's another one of these that has the Steelbook, of course. So this is one of the main variations that I was missing. So I thought, yeah, let's get this right now if we can. And then if you followed my channel, I also picked up a whole stack of Pokemon games for the 3DS factory sealed. We got X, Y, Ruby, Sun, Moon, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon here. I don't have Alpha Sapphire because I already have that one factory sealed. Let me just grab that from my shelf right now. So I already had this one, so that kind of completes all the 3DS sealed Pokemon games. I think for this one, I paid roughly $300 in total for the seven of them. The price was pretty good, especially if you consider trying to ship these to yourself several times over. So the person was kind of close to where I live. Free shipping, we had a discussion for a little while. You can probably still find Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon in stores, which I did talk about that previous video. And a few of you actually messaged me and said like, hey, I found a copy at Walmart for like the original price or it was down at $30. And then there's also in Canada, some people were saying shoppers Drug Mart is discounting those games sometimes, and you can find them really, really inexpensive for a great price. 
One more Pokemon game that I picked up this month. I do not have the bigger box variations of the Let's Go Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch. So this is Let's Go Eevee. I'm still missing the big box variation of Let's Go Pikachu. It does come with the Pokeball Plus, which is pretty cool. And it obviously comes with a game as well. So this is something that is... It still has the new sticker on it, by the way, from like GameStop or EB Games right there. So this is something that I've wanted for a really long time. I again found it locally. I paid, I think it was like $65 for it, which is probably a really good deal considering on eBay a lot of them go for over $100. It's not in absolute mint condition. It is open, but the Pokeball is still sealed, which is kind of neat. So it's not really a sealed variation, but it's definitely something that I'm really happy to have. The only other big box Switch Pokemon thing that I have right now is the Sword and Shield Edition that comes with a steel book that you can see right here. So I already have that one. Any of these are obviously going to continue to rise. I don't think they're going to be restocked by Nintendo. I think the games will be, but I don't think the Pokeball Plus variations will be. And another thing that you guys were mentioning to me is I should probably try and get Sword and Shield with the expansion passes because the expansion passes are actually on the cartridge themselves. So that's something I'm going to keep my eye out later this month to see if I can get that and add it to my collection as well. One more really special item to bring you for this collection video for the month of April. I did a crazy video where I daisy chained five GameCubes together and showed off how you could play Four Swords Adventures from the Legend of Zelda franchise on Nintendo GameCubes with five different TVs. It's actually something that we did years ago for Zelda Thons, but I really thought it was time that I showed off how to do that. And some of you were mentioning, you should definitely try and do this with Double Dash. So that leads me to this. This is a broadband adapter for the Nintendo GameCube. I had to pay a hundred bucks for it and it's factory sealed. It still has the $50 sticker on it. Again, this was local and I'm actually shocked that it is factory sealed fully. So even though I really want to put all these GameCubes together and at least get some eight person double dash experience going once I can have more friends over, I'm not positive if I want to open this or not. I kind of don't. I think I only have one other broadband adapter in my collection. It's Japanese. I'm curious if it will work on North American systems. You need at least two of them to put two systems together for eight person play, so I'm told, but I've never tried it, never seen it done in person ever before. I've been watching some YouTube videos of it, but the videos aren't always that clear of what to do. You need a two way cable and everything like that. So let me know, what should I do? Should I open this? Should I keep it sealed? Should I consider maybe selling this at some point and then trying to buy two of them that are opened? But I at least want two of these broadband adapters. They are different than the modem adapters, by the way. It, I hate how Nintendo had made two of those different ones, and I never knew that there was a difference between the modem adapter and the broadband adapter, but there definitely is, so make sure you just keep an eye on that, especially if you ever want to play Double Dash with more than just four people. Let me know what your thoughts are of all of these pickups for me for the month of April and what your favorite one is. My personal favorites are, of course, the sealed Pokemon games. I love getting the Paper Mario Black Label finally. Magnum Allo, I'm excited to unbox those Amiibo. And I really want to take a closer look at this Banjo-Kazooie from Cable Guys. I also love this right here, the Dandelion. That's so cool. A factory sealed brand wide adapter? Man, if I had to pick just one item, I'm not really sure. Probably this Banjo-Kazooie stand, because I love that game so much. We're just going to see how it looks, possibly in another video. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are awesome. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. Have a great day, everyone.